Join me, five-time Paralympian Greg Westlake, as we journey across Canada to bring you incredible stories of how sport can heal, inspire, and bring communities together. This is Level Playing Field. Hello and welcome to an exciting new season of Level Playing Field. We hope you're ready because we've traveled the country finding people that exemplify the values of the show and we are thrilled to bring you their stories. Later in the program, we'll learn about a few development initiatives at Swim Ontario, led by retired Paralympian Darta Sales. But first, we head to the starting line with para-athletic sprinter Marissa Papa Constantinou. So walking out into the Tokyo Stadium, there was music blasting. It was just like pumping me up and I was getting excited and I was bouncing around in my running blade. I just really tell myself like, you got this, like it's something you do every single day, nothing's new here. I use my hands, my palms on the ground. I will then step back into the blocks using my left foot first and then I will adjust my blade on the right side. Then they will say on your mark. When the starter says set, you raise your hips up. Then the gun will go off and you explode out of the blocks. Make every second count. We've all heard that expression, but for sprinters like Marissa Papa Constantinou, a second is too much time. For Marissa, success and failure is measured by one hundredth of a second, a fact she and her coach, Bob Westman, are very aware of. Good job, girls. How we clear the blocks is, in a, is a place that we're gonna get a little bit better on. How we, we sprint at max velocity. If we can just creep up that max velocity a little bit longer, Four, five, six, seven. There are not huge gains that can be had in any one place. So the goal was to look at probably five or six different elements and make small gains in each of them. So I watched your race from Tokyo. Thank you. So how important is a good start? Because I come from a hockey background. I'm a hockey player. So for us, if we get scored on in the first minute, we're down one nothing. I still have 44 more minutes of that game to make it up. I can really make up a bad start. You can't. And, and, and so just talk, walk us through maybe the intensity of fractions of a second. What's it like to know that that's what's going to determine it? I think it's, uh, first of all, there's like a lot of fuel in that because, um, again, it's like those attention to detail every single day. It's not settling for, you know, that was a good run, that was okay. It's like, how do you get from being good to great? Whether on the track or at the gym, Marissa is determined to make those small gains a reality. All I can do is focus on like setting personal best and I think that's what I aim to do in like a lot of my competitions. You're obviously not gonna set a personal best every single race, but having that mentality of running your personal best every time so that you know you're putting your best effort and foot forward into every single performance that you do. That drive and motivation to make every second count eventually paid off at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games where she placed third in the women's 100 meter. Look at the joy in her face. Pepper Constantinou of Canada. I don't think she can believe it. She's won a bronze medal at the Paralympics. I knew that it was so doable to be on the podium, but I just was not like trying not to think about that too much. I was surprised, but I wasn't surprised at the same time because I knew, like I actually believed I could do it. She was in a mindset of like, I'm just gonna do my best and whatever happens, happens. So we knew anything was possible on the day. Knowing that you achieved that milestone was just such a like overwhelming feeling and excitement and I was just like so proud of not only myself, but like everyone that's helped me get to that point. It means that the time her family puts in, the time that she puts in, everything just kind of comes together in a way. As Coach Bob mentioned, her family, particularly her parents, Kathy and Bill, played a huge part in getting her on that podium. It was pretty emotional. We were laughing, crying. She just comes in calm and you can tell by the way she's jumping around and she knew what she can accomplish, and she was determined to do it. Bronze medalist representing Canada, Marissa Papa Constantino. I only owe it to them to just keep performing to the best of my ability and to keep working as hard as I can to kind of like achieve those goals I set up for. But I know like I can never disappoint them at the end of the day. It's just in my heart, I want to always be the best version of myself for, for them. Even at a young age, Marissa, who was born without her right foot, had a natural inclination to move fast. Marissa was very energetic as a child, constantly running. There was that whole stress, what, 
you know, what will she be like? What is she gonna do? And we were stressed until she stood up. We used to have this, it was like an island, kind of a bar area. And all Marissa would do is run circles around the, the bar. So she was already running track by the, you know, by the time she was one. As athletes themselves, her parents decided to feed her athletic prowess as early as possible. We both played sports constantly. And that was our, it's our lifestyle. It was important for us to get her involved as well. We exposed her, you know, pretty quickly to soccer. Basketball came shortly thereafter. You know what, she wants to try all this stuff, we're gonna let her try, and she was asking for it. That love for sport her parents fostered eventually led Marissa to sprinting. Track really just took, took over when I learned that there were so many more opportunities to be at such a higher level. How fast someone could move from point A to point B was really fascinating as well. Marissa then received her first running blade and was one step closer to her goal. So having something to like actually run with that was meant for physical activity, it felt like I had two feet for the first time. Like I was just like, whoa, my world opened up to this like new level of mobility that I'd never experienced before. In time, she discovered there were opportunities for her to represent Canada at the Paralympic Games. I did this campaign called It's More Than Sport with the Canadian Paralympic Committee. And uh, that was when, you know, I started to learn about the fact that there were other classifications and disabilities and um, events and sports that partake in the Paralympic Games. And it was just really cool to, to see like this whole community and world that like I suddenly automatically just like fit into. We would have people come up to us and go, um, get ready to travel. And travel they did, as 16-year-old Marissa had the opportunity to represent Canada at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. Ladies and gentlemen, the Paralympic Flames. At the end of the day, you train so much for really just like a very, very short period of time in your life. And there's just, there are limited opportunities to be able to prove to yourself and show the world what you can do. So we tried to stay back and let her, you know, experience it, but we were definitely watching every move. Rio was one step in her athletic career. And as with any step, there is always a chance of slipping. In the 2017 World Para-Athletics 200 meter sprint final, Marissa suffered a tear in her hamstring while racing. Ah, oh, man, like I look back and I, I feel like I know and I have a sense of why I finished that race. And it was just like, well, it was pretty simple to what I was thinking in that moment of just like, I had not finished a race. I owed it to myself after like all the build up up until that race to finish it. Even though she crossed the finish line, that injury would still linger long after the race was over. She needed to heal, and that's when she found Coach Bob. With any injury, first thing you gotta learn is how the athlete kind of recovers and handles those things, both physically and emotionally. I've learned that I'm a lot stronger of a person than I thought I was. You know, when you're living in these moments of like self-doubt, physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, you really start to question, you know, what you're capable of in those moments. Our goal was, okay, so while this is going on, what are the other elements that we can work on? Maybe we can't be sprinting full out at this moment, but we can still be getting incrementally stronger in the weight room. We can work on the causes of this injury. Marissa was Coach Bob's first experience in training someone with a leg prosthesis and needed to adapt to her needs. Let's get up on our feet, walk back. As an athlete with a disability, a Paralympic runner, what were some stuff you felt like you had to teach him so that he could be the best coach for you? One of the biggest things is like an amputee, and I'm sure you would know this, is that you burn significantly more energy than the average able-bodied individual would. And so I think it's just kind of been navigating, you know, what is like a good amount of load for Marissa. Here's the reality, she's a, a single leg, below knee amputee. So at almost all times, we're gonna be asymmetrical and our body's gonna have different forces, different shearing forces going on. There's always something I'm learning about my body. And I, I do realize throughout this process that like I, I do put it through a lot, but I also try my very best to like take care of it as best I can. It's hard. We always have a plan and make sure that we're like being proactive with things, but also like if something is bothering me, like very reactive as well. Ready, go. go girls. Marissa also trains with able-bodied sprinters on an integrated track team, something she views as a benefit. 
It's everyone just wants to do their absolute best, be the best version of themselves. It's the approach that you bring to the table, and that's what they can get out of each other in particular. I honestly don't see like my training environment being any other way. Um, those girls push me day in and day out to be like the best version of myself. I've always been used to chasing people down, and it's only helped make me faster. Um, it feels good when I, you know I kind of have started to close that gap on them, and like it just means that I'm improving, and they're just them being able to push me is like a great training environment to be in. Currently, Marissa is an ambassador for Holland Blurview. She's also a public speaker who regularly visits schools to share her experiences with the young students. I was going to, regardless, live in the moment, be present, and focus on the things that I can control. Someone that has never seen a running blade before or whatever is now like aware of people like myself and that there is a whole other world out there of parasport. They now maybe think that they can do something that they never thought they were able to do before. She became the first female Canadian athlete sponsored by Nike and shares her love for track on social media to hopefully inspire the next generation of para-athletes. I know her passion and her mandate is how do we create a platform that is really mainstream. I definitely can see myself kind of wearing a lot of different hats. Um, I would love to do, you know, Olympic, Paralympic coverage. Um, I see myself doing summer and winter sport. I think that it would be so cool to kind of get like more of the winter sport experience in the future because I have lived my life as like a summer sport athlete. We hear rumblings of maybe another sport or whatever. So anyway, I hope she does what makes her happy as she has been now and continues that route. She's already well on her way of kind of having a, sp a career outside of sport, whether it's in journalism or public speaking or, or any different element. So um, I hope she just has a long, happy, healthy career and and track goes on for as long as she wants it to. Now that Tokyo is firmly in the rear view, she trains to take home gold in Paris 2024. I have brought an expectation of myself to the table of like, I deserve to be on the podium. And um, I think where before it was like this impeding feeling of like, oh, like, am I gonna make it? And I think now it's just like, I know I can be there. She also reflects on how far track and parasport have taken her. I think about where I started in parasport and um, how much it's changed in the last even few years and the opportunities that have existed. You know, a para athlete is now in this world and has this opportunity to be their own brand like any other athlete would and to have sponsorship and to make money and to make sport like a living. And so I think that that's super cool and I love that now I have the opportunity to again like inspire that next generation to increase participation from especially the grassroots level. I think that that's a huge thing moving forward and Parasport in Canada and I think track and field specifically is just getting more people involved and showing them the opportunities that exist in the Parasport world. Gold, silver, bronze, or did not finish. Marissa recognizes that one of the key aspects of being a Paralympian is supporting and inspiring the next generation. After the break, we learn a little more about one of Marissa's favorite races in a segment that we call Sport Explained. And later, we hit the pool deck with Darta Sales. Stay with us. Level Playing Field will be right back. Now back to level playing field. Sport explained. 200 meters with a blade. The 200 meter sprint running race combines speed, endurance, and power in one of the most exciting events contested at both the Paralympics and Olympics. On a traditional 400 meter oval racetrack, athletes line up in six to eight lanes. The race begins on the curve of the track and finishes on the home straight. Like other sprint races, athletes line up in the starting blocks. Starting blocks are a metal adjustable device used by sprinters to generate maximum velocity and brace their feet against slipping as they start the race. The race begins with the firing of a starter's pistol and ends when each athlete crosses the finish line. At the Tokyo Paralympics, medals were awarded in 12 categories, including the T61 and T64 classifications. Sprinters in the T61 and T64 classifications compete with prostheses. Athletes in these classifications often use a type of prosthesis known as running blades. 
A running blade consists of two main parts, the blade and the socket. The blade at the bottom of the prosthesis is a curved J-shaped piece of carbon fiber that acts like a spring. The socket at the top is used to attach the prosthesis to the athlete's lower limb. Running blades are highly customizable with the ultimate goal of creating a comfortable running stride for the sprinter. Now you're ready to hit the blocks. Level playing field, we'll be right back. Now back to Level Playing Field with Greg Wesley. Once a Paralympian, always a Paralympian. Even after entering the world of academia, retired para swimmer Darda Sales is still finding ways to bridge the gap between research and grassroots change. So with our Intro to Paraswimming uh, program, one of the big things is we want that positive first experience for our athletes. Um, we know that how people feel on their very first time on a pool deck can make or break whether they come back. I know you can do it. I know you can. The reason Darda Sales is so sure the first experience is so important to newcomers is because when she isn't on the pool deck in her wheelchair, coaching the Intro to Paraswimming course with the London Aquatic Club, she is doing her own research. No, really, as a consultant and researcher, it is her job and passion. When I was doing these interviews with athletes and their parents about their experiences, how their kids got involved in the sport and where they wanted to take it, it just really got me thinking that we need to know more. Um, yes, swimming is swimming, but there are some nuanced differences to the experience of individuals with disabilities. Now, as Para Swimming Development Consultant for Swim Ontario and in partnership with Swimming Canada, Darda is able to put that research into action. One way she is doing that is with an entry-level program in London, Ontario. Well, a lot of it is learn to swim. And we know that learn to swim is so important for individuals with impairments because the statistics tell us that the proportion of drowning deaths is exponentially higher for individuals with disabilities. And so even just teaching them how to swim is such an important safety component. I always tell parents, I will teach your child to swim and they will be safe in the water. And from there, we just build their skills and we build their self-confidence to the point where they are comfortable in the water and they call themselves a swimmer, they feel like a swimmer and they can decide what to do next. And some of them do move on to higher levels within the club and start doing competitions and, and all those things and it's great. And some of them find our program and they're like, this is where I'm comfortable and this is where I wanna stay. And we try to provide a space for them as well. One person who made the decision to make the jump to the competitive circuit is Hannah Burns. Not only is she now an emerging national level athlete, but Hannah, who uses a wheelchair on dry land, also returned to the program as a coach to help the next generation of first time para swimmers. I was excited to be swimming with other kids with disabilities and meet kids similar to me because there weren't a lot at my school or in my town. And I was really inspired by Darda because she was a Paralympian. So like, it was cool to see somebody who had already been through that. I really like the kids that we work with and I like seeing them progress like every week that they're getting faster and more confident in the water. And I'm excited to see like where they end up and if they continue with the sport. She's working with athletes and that's so important. We need that representation. We need, you know, these, these younger individuals with impairments seeing someone else with, else with similar life experience doing these roles of authority and, and of significance so that they see themselves that that's something that they can also strive to. The initiatives Darda is pushing for Swim Canada and Swim Ontario are already paying dividends in several ways. Not only are athletes safer and graduating to high performance pathways, they're also inspiring the next generation. It doesn't stop there. Darda is also working to create more options for para swimmers who enter later in life. People like Sumbul Zafir, who swims with the Golden Horseshoe Aquatic Club in Hamilton. So in 2021, I declared myself with Swim Ontario as a swimmer with a physical impairment, which was dystonia, and just being able to declare that 
I like made a cake and had it be like, okay, I fully accept that I have dystonia and I'm gonna do my passion. This is so exciting. And then all of a sudden it's like, now what? Because there's no pair of master swimming. So in an effort to create new competitive opportunities for people like Sumble, the master's para swimming category was established. And so it kind of gives them more options to be wherever they're most comfortable. And I think when we're first starting out, that's what we need. Um, we need them to, to build that confidence and those skills, and then they can decide if they want to stay in the Masters or they want to slide over to an age group club as they can continue through the competitive levels. With Darda's help, that's exactly what Sumble has chosen to do. And she is now well on her way to competing for Canada, despite her late entry to Paris swimming. But she's also happy that her struggles led to change in no small part, due to the hard work of Darda. To open those doors to anybody who has suffered tragedy at like 18, spinal cord, car, car accidents, strokes, whatever it may be, it opens a platform for them to be able to use the sport as a way to reignite, redevelop their passion, confidence, self-esteem, community. These are all things that when you get newly diagnosed with something, go. They're the first things to go, and it's so hard to regain. And that's why this is so important. Another important initiative Darda is spearheading is the Pools to Schools program that helps build para-swimming awareness through virtual presentations in Canadian classrooms. I know educating kids on Paralympic ideals at a young age can have a profound impact. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Greg Westlake. Join us next week for more level playing field. Host producer, Greg Wesley. Senior producer, director, Ted Cooper. Director of photography, senior editor, Matthew McGurk. Integrated described video consultant, M. Williams. Supervising producer, Michelle Dudas. Produced by Evergreen Productions. Copyright 2023. An AMI original production.